Hello and welcome to our webcast on e-car charging speed. My name is Yannick Weber and I'm an application engineer at Siemens and I help develop the e-car charging suite. The e-car charging suite serves as an interface between the electric car and the backend and is intended to ensure simple billing. When creating the application, we paid particular attention to scalability and modularity. This means that we can expand the number of charging points as desired and also adapt the range of functions to customer requirements. In the course of the videos, we go through the application piece by piece, put it into operation and look at certain functions. This video is about putting the simulation into operation for the first time. The eCar charging suite contains a simulation with which we can map the simulation and also the charging behavior for the first time with the help of PE System Advanced. Let's start with the simulation. I have already opened the TIA portal project here. The open controller is already preset here. But we cannot start and simulate it with PE System Advanced. Therefore, we have to create a new PLC. For this, I go to Add New Device, select my desired CPU, in this case the CPU 1512 2PN, and edit. Once the CPU is created, I have to drag all blocks, PLC tags and data types over to the new CPU. For this, I open the device power cabinet, open the controller and start with the PLC data types. I copy them and then paste them here. After that, we take the PLC tags. Once again, I mark all folders press CTRL and copy and paste them up here. The last thing is the program blocks. Again, mark all program blocks and folders, press CTRL and copy and paste them into the program blocks above. Because there is already a main OB1, we have to override it. For this, we have to select this option. Then we confirm and now all program blocks are copied over. Once all files are copied over, we can go into the PLC tags under User and Configuration and check here if the settings of the connectors and the charge poles are correct. I now have one charge pole and two connectors here. This means I can charge two cars at the same time. If I want to have four connectors, I need to enter a four here and half of it here, i.e. two. We would have two charge poles with two charge points each. If the settings are correct, I can close the PLC tags again and then jump into the program blocks under core functions and open the block ECC Suite Config Startup. Here I have to adjust some settings. Because we have copied the blocks, the wrong interface is now in here. Since we don't need this for the simulation yet, we can comment it out for now. Then, we scroll to the very bottom and may have to make some settings here. If we want to simulate the whole thing and only run it locally, we have to set the auth type here. This must then be set to local. We have a login required. We also want to simulate the whole thing. For this reason, the variable must be set to true here as well. Now we see here the local authorization list. This contains all the keys that we want to match locally with our RFID reader. So if we want to start a transaction and log in, we have to hold a key and it will be matched with this list. When we start the simulation later, we will use this exact key. Then we can jump into the ECC Suite Config Runtime. This is where the RCDs and MCBs are linked. 
However, since we don't have those wired, because we have a simulation, we automatically set them to true. We do this with all connectors and with RCDs and MCBs. Since we don't poll the feedback and don't have any wired, we can comment them out completely. Now we have everything set up and can soon start with the simulation. To be able to observe the whole process, we should create a watch table. I have already created it. I will only show it once more. To create a new watch table, we go to Watch and Force Tables and then press the button Add New Watch Table. Now that I have created it, I don't have to press it here. I just open my watch table again and show here which variables I have taken. I have built up my watch and force table in such a way that I divide it according to the individual connectors and have here the first block for the first connector. The second one is then finally set up the same way for the second connector. The current state name will later contain the variable in which the state machine is located. Thus, also where the connector is located. Here, the data for the car are entered. And in the second part, the RFID token will be shown. And also the selected login type, in order to check this. Afterwards, you can see here whether the gateway is connected or not. But this is only interesting for future actions. Once we have created our watch and force table, we jump to the top, right-click on Virtual 2 Sim, our project, select the settings, go to protection and check the box here, otherwise we can't simulate our blocks. Then we confirm the whole thing with OK. Now we made all the arrangements needed to start the simulation. All we need to do now is load the whole project into PLCSIM Advanced. I have already started PLCSIM Advanced. I have set the following things here. PLCSIM is selected. The controller was given a name. And the CPU started via the Start button. Now we load the whole thing into the CPU. I go here via Online. Extend a download to device in order to show again the settings. Here I have direct at slot. But I take try all interfaces. And start the search. Now the controller was found. And I press load. Now everything loads into the PLC. This can take some time again. And I press Finish. Now the whole program is online and I want to look at the CPU. For this reason I choose here Go Online. And click on the glasses and choose the window and press Monitor All. After that, I start the CPU and I see that my connectors are in the available state. So now we want to simulate a car connecting to the station. To do this, we first need to enter the current of the cable, for example, 2 amps. Then set the variable that simulates the present car or that a cable has been detected to true and also set the latch to true. The variable should simulate that a card is held in front of the RFID reader. So this is where we enter our RFID key that we just saw in the ECC Suite config startup. We go back in here and take this key. Copy it. And enter it here. 
Now we force all the variables. So if we force the RFID token now, we simulate holding the card in front of an RFID reader. To force the whole thing, I select this entry here. Press Modify now. And now all values that are in the Modify value column are set. So I see we are in the step charging, because these variables are true and that I am locked in. If I want to reset the whole thing or log out to stop the transaction, I will take this W string and copy it to my right. You will see why in the course of the simulation. Paste it again here above, but delete the key and leave the W string empty. Then I copy the W string and paste it here and press again modify now. By this we reset the key again. So we take the card away from the RFID reader. If we want to log out now, we take our key again, hold the card in front of our RFID reader, press modify now and we will be logged out. We finally end up in finishing. Then we simulate the behavior that the user unlocks the car by pressing modify to zero. It's pulling out the cable and there is no more power. If this is the case, we are back in available. Now we only have to reset the RFID token, i.e. we have to remove our card from the reader again. To do this, we take the empty W string we just copied out, paste it here and press modify now. Yes, we have run through the complete loading cycle now with the simulation and have the great advantage that we don't have to have the whole thing built up as hardware anywhere yet. I hope I could help you to start the project and to understand the simulation better. I hope you will tune in again for the next video. We will extend our project with the OCPP gateway to connect to your backend system. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.